Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. I believe uh, Mr. Rottenborn showed you this last week and, and again today. Yes, yes. Do you recognize these text messages as between you and Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, why are you informing Ms. Hurd that there's a book called Disco Bloodbath? I, I at that when I texted her, yeah, two thirty in the afternoon. I was uh, I was in a bookstore, um, a, a, a used bookstore or a, a um, bookstore that had a lot of first editions and things like that, which was sort of a passion. And I saw a book called Disco Bloodbath, and I thought it was uh, I thought it was a funny title. Uh, I can't say that I was necessarily referencing anything other than I thought it was a funny title, Disco Bloodbath. Um, it sounded like a, a sort of a bad slasher movie to me. So I said, just thought you should know that there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. And then she said, we need that book. And then she asked me, is, is it about last Friday night by any chance? And then um, my, my answer uh, to her, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? The, the fact is, uh, this, this is a lighthearted exchange that she's even saying, we need that book. Then she makes reference to last Friday night, which I don't recall what last Friday night was or whatever, so I just um, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? I, I, a hideous moment could have been some grotesque thing that we saw on television. It could have been anything. I, I don't recall now, but all I was saying is, and it even says at the end of my text, that's all disco bloodbath, you know. Um, so I, I, this was not a, uh, we were not butting heads in this exchange whatsoever. It was very lighthearted. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 375, which is another document Mr. Rottenborn showed you last week. Yes. Um, could you please remind the jury what's reflected in this photograph? Um, um, on the, this, this is from Australia. Uh, on March 8th, I believe it was where um, after my finger had been, um, the tip of my finger had been taken off, um, I, I began to, I was in such shock, I just started writing on the mirror on the on walls and um, basically what these were for me to Ms. Hurd were reminders of moments in our past where I had caught her, caught her, where it was revealed to me even by her that uh, she had been caught in lies that she had told me. So that's what these are in reference to. The, the, the red, the lipstick um, that says, call Carly Simon, b b call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, um, in reference to you're so vain, I am imagining. But that's not, I didn't, uh, the Carly Simon message is not mine, that's Miss Hurd's. 
So let's just break this down a little bit. Who who wrote the the text that's in black on the mirror? That that would be me. And and what does that say? Um. Uh, she loves. I don't know, th like naked Hollywood or something. Um. An artist of, I don't know what the rest says, but is, what that is, is Ms. Heard had come to me and she was seriously, seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in, in Hollywood. She was, she was concerned that because she had done films where there was uh, kind of arbitrary nudity and things of that nature, she had voiced to me that she did not want to be, um, she, she didn't want to be looked upon that way in the industry. She wanted to be able to escape the, the chains of being objectified by the Hollywood system, which is a difficult thing for any woman, certainly, uh, unfortunately. But she, she, she asked me, how can I, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the, as the beautiful blonde who, who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to stoop people in, in movies? Uh, and I gave her my. Um, ad advice on it, on how on how to avoid it, which I thought was pretty accurate, and uh, it, it she uh, her ambition was uh, stronger than than um, than what she received from my advice uh, is, is is what it was. My advice that I thought long and hard about because I did care for her and I did understand. I didn't want her to have to do that. And early on in my career, I, I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on, I could have been just a guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years. And then, you know, what was going to be left of me was, uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things, and I, I fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't. That's not who I was. So I, I had had I had experienced something similar in, in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not, and so I fought against it in the very beginning and. Um, it, it worked out for me for, you know, for a while there. And uh, I was giving her basically the same advice 